Did you see them? The northern lights were visible here across North Georgia skies on Tuesday evening Veterans Day. We got photos from all across North Georgia, a lot of them showing these hues of kind of that red shaded color in the skies, less in the way of the pictures of the green shaded colors. And this is because what color you see correlates to how high up in the sky you're actually seeing those colors. So let's talk about why we get the Aurora Borealis or in the southern hemisphere, the Aurora Australias, but the northern lights, the Aurora Borealis, happens because of a reaction happening in Earth's outer atmosphere. So let's take a couple steps back and first talk about why we get solar storms hitting the Earth. And it's because the sun, the sun, it always has solar wind coming off of it. And that solar wind interacts with the magnetic field in Earth. So we always have this solar wind. These are charged protons, electrons that are thrown at the Earth. And sometimes we have these large releases that are thrust at the Earth of plasma and magnetic field called coronal mass ejections. Well, these coronal mass ejections travel incredibly fast towards the Earth, arriving in one to four days time. And we had one of those spots on the sun let out one of these coronal mass ejections, a solar storm arriving on Earth yesterday. And there's another batch of that plasma and magnetic field, part of the CME that's arriving Wednesday around midday here at Earth. So as that gets to Earth's magnetic field and outer atmosphere, it reacts with the particles that are in our atmosphere. So those charged particles follow Earth's magnetic field down to the poles. That's why you first see the Aurora Borealis towards the North Pole and South Pole for the Aurora Australis. And then when we see these stronger solar storms, they make it to the lower latitudes. Well, as these electrons and protons are colliding with molecules in the atmosphere, they actually excite those molecules. And then as they go back down in their state of excitement, they release a color. This is very similar to how neon lights work. Or if you've ever been in a chemistry class where you had to stick like the different kind of copper or different, um, different particles in the Bunsen burner and the, the light and it made a color. Well, that's the same type of chemical reaction, the state of excitement, and then going back down in a phase uh, that's happening. So protons, as they arrive, usually produce really faint auroras. We can't really see them with the naked eyes, but electrons, those energized electrons in the magnetosphere, accelerate down to the poles and they transfer their energy to these other atoms that are in our atmosphere. You know, our atmosphere has oxygen in it and nitrogen in it. And there are different levels of the atmosphere. So when we see those auroras of red, that's because it's reacting with oxygen molecules that are above 200 kilometers up in the sky. And then when we see those green shaded auroras, sometimes blue, but more than anything, we see red and green auroras. Those green auroras are 100 to 200 kilometers up, and they're actually reacting with oxygen molecules that are in the sky. So again, when they are, are hitting these oxygen and nitrogen molecules in our atmosphere, it's exciting them. They go into a different state when you think about chemistry, and then as they go back down in their state, they release that beautiful color. So auroras can actually take different shapes in the sky as well. It depends on the time of day that it is. But this particular geomagnetic storm that impacted us was so strong that we were able to see them as far south as Georgia. If you remember back to last year in 2024, there were two different events where the aurora was visible in Georgia. The first of which was kind of Mother's Day weekend timeframe in May. And then in the fall in October, we had a second geomagnetic storm that reached those levels that we could see the, the uh, northern lights here in Georgia as well. In fact, last year we had one of those solar storms that got up to a G5 an extreme geomagnetic storm. Well, the one last night that arrived here, it was a G4 severe geomagnetic storm. The uh, KP index, which is the measure of how far south we're gonna be able to see the aurora, got to about an 8.6 overnight, which means in Northern Georgia, we can see it faint on the horizon. The best way to capture it is with a three second exposure on your phone. It's much easier for your phone to capture it than for you to actually see it with the naked eye. But when we see that KP index getting above a 9, closer to a 9.5, it's much easier to see it with the naked eye. But yeah, we got a lot of photos in from our 11 Alive Weather Impact team members on Facebook. And we are actually still forecast this afternoon and evening to have another push of that CME 
arriving on Earth. And with that, the KP index could reach about an eight again this afternoon. It's still forecast to be around a seven and a half or so as we get into the evening. So could we see the northern lights here in Georgia again Wednesday evening? It is possible. Are we definitely going to see the northern lights here in Georgia Wednesday evening? That is not a fact. We are not definitely, but is a possibility. Sometimes with these solar storms, they can over exceed the KP index or they can under exceed. So I always say if you see it one night and there's a chance the next night, don't count on you definitely seeing it. It's, it's not a given. So the KP index last night got to an 8.6 or so, and that's why we could see it all the way down even closer to central Georgia. It wasn't as far south as last year. Remember last May, they actually saw it in the Florida Keys and the Bahamas even. But tonight, it's forecast to be kind of a seven and a half to an eight. So there's a possibility that we could see it very faint on the horizon. The easiest way is with that phone after sunset looking north. So look up in the sky and if you see photos, you can share those with us by posting them to our 11 Alive Weather Impact Facebook group.